All right, here we go. Overdrive off and running TSN 1050 on the TSN app, your home smart speaker and up on TSN. Brian Hazio, Doug Jeff O'Neill, Jamie Noodles, McLennan into the month of November now. Halloween Noodles. officially behind us. Noodles, are you at a bed and breakfast by chance? Of course, we can't hear him, so that's can't probably your him. answer. There you go, Noodles. That's great. He didn't even turn Best his shot mic. I could get. Yeah, oh, there, there you, you go. go. We got yeah. Sorry, press we the mic. Press the mic, mic on boys. whenever you're on the road. I it's like it. I like hour. the wallpaper. I like okay. the wallpaper. Yeah, it is. Uh, it's the best shot I could get because, honestly, if you wanted me stuffed in the corner, where was it when I was in – was that in St. Albert and I was in some – I was on a couch and it was like a green wall behind me or something? Yeah. Yes, like you're that. at a grungy hotel in your hometown. Yes. Yes. Uh, cause you didn't want to go to your mom's house for some reason to do the show. You could have done it over there, but it's all no, good. It's all didn't good. Didn't want to bother. It's... Didn't want to bother, but you know, I, I am at a, a very nice hotel and this was the best shot. The wallpaper, there is a weird thing. There's a, a dummy you can hang your suit on behind you. Like. I, so like I, I, that. That. Right. I like that. I like that move. Yeah, so there you go. Did okay, that, are you did traveling that, but... with the Ottawa Senators, the circus of the NHL? Is that where you are right now or what? I'm not. I'm actually, you know, in Calgary and, and going to catch Calgary Dallas. So talking about another you know, situation. But uh, man, oh, man, where, where do we start with Ottawa? What do you guys, you know, where are we at? Well, it's a circus is what it is. I mean, it's an embarrassment for the league. It's an embarrassment for Ottawa. Pierre Dorian, you know, their longstanding GM, he's he's been yeah. let go. I don't think it's a surprise because if you're not familiar with his story, Evgeny Dadnov was traded a couple of years ago uh, from Ottawa to Vegas, another one of the signings that they handed out that didn't work. And he had a limited no trade that I guess is the responsibility of the Ottawa Senators. Clearly it is based on this ruling to notify of the, the team that is acquiring him that he has – a limited no trade. Ottawa Easy. and Pierre Dorian chose not to reveal that information. How do you not? Like, that is one of those things where it's like, if you're going to buy a golf club, you got to take it, like, back to the demo rack and grab a real one. It's like that kind of fundamental thing, isn't it? Like, how do you forget to do that in the big leagues? I, I oh. don't know, and I'm a bit surprised that in 2023 there isn't some system that the whole NHL can use to notify yes. everyone of that as well. Like yeah. that right. seems somewhat uh, out of touch. You know, the idea that it's a it's a paper transaction that you know, what are you still using a fax machine to send that type type of info to Vegas? But Vegas eventually wanted to trade Dadnoff to Anaheim. Problem was, Anaheim was on his no-trade list. Vegas didn't know it existed, and neither did Anaheim. And it was an incredibly embarrassing situation for the whole league and for both well, teams. And oh, oh, now they've this? been penalized. Uh, Ottawa's been uh, penalized, and they're gonna the league's going to take a first-round pick away from them. And as yeah. a result, Pierre Dorian is out. Yeah, well, oh, you say this all the time. It's a fireball offense for certain things. That's basically what we're looking at, correct? I mean, do you not think that this – is a scenario where Pierre Dorian, you know, he messed up and, and, you know, cost him his job. It's crazy. I mean, a first round pick. I mean, why, why, why the delay though? That's what I don't understand that you said it hazy. That was two years ago. Mm -hmm. Well, two, two years, years ago, he was sent to Vegas, uh, you know, a year ago or so he was trying to be sent to Anaheim. Remember? And it obviously got nixed and that was a circus. Um, you're right, though, why it takes so long to investigate. Yeah. That's where the new owner, Michael Anlauer, is really, really sour because he made it clear that he was not told about this investigation and he was not told about the Shane Pinto investigation, which what? <laughs> terrible. Se seems pretty greasy from the NHL to, you know, Gary Bettman, I'm sure, went for many dinners lunches with this guy that's the first thing that's the first guy that has to be informed right you're coming into the club and i want you to know that you can always trust me so we're looking into pinto and we're looking into taking a first round pick away from you and they chose not to reveal that information um we have that clip he's he's sour i mean very rarely do yeah. you see an owner come out right like this could have just been steve steos in ottawa coming out and making this announcement and decision and Lau is a new owner. You know, the ink is barely dry. And here is what uh, the owner of the Ottawa Sen uh, Senators had to say about basically 
building up towards him buying the team and, and what's happened over the last couple of weeks? Yes, it was, and we were not made aware. Um, that's another troubling thing for me, uh, whether it's the agent is supposed to or not. Uh, there's a lot behind the story. I don't want to tell too much, but the reality is that, yeah, we, at the time that I know I was made aware, I figured that we need to understand what the investigation is all about. Um, before, so I kind of, I put a stop to it, to to any negotiations. Uh, what, what, what I would find out, because it just it made it made no sense uh, going forward um, uh, until such time, and especially that I felt that there was some, you know, I wasn't getting, we weren't getting all the truth, uh, all the facts. Let's, let's just say that not truth. Let's say all the facts. Okay, that was about Pinto. There's other clips. We don't need to play right. them. But listen, he he's a new owner that feels like the league was not forthright with him, which they weren't. I, I don't know about business ethics and all that. Um, he went on to say, you know, maybe it's because they wanted the seller to get the highest price. I, I don't think any prospective buyer is going to shave off $100,000 because of Shane Pinto on a first-round pick. I mean, let's be honest. This is a massive transaction. If you're going to buy the team, you're going to buy the team. This is not about. It. It's still greasy. To not, it like is. You've got to let him know to say, hey, man, you got something coming up. I don't know why it's taken this long. It's basically protocol. But you're getting pinched for a first-round pick because of this, this, and this. Right. Like, that's just standard it, business. It man. is. And now that Dorian's out, I would guess they'll end up rescinding this. Or, or they'll, they'll, they'll review it again down the line, and they'll push it back. You know, remember, I think it was the Kovalchuk signing. Yeah. Didn't they eventually Amarillo. just say, forget it, we're not even going to penalize you? We have to look that up. Dude, you look that up. But I, I have a feeling the Devils never ended up actually losing a pick. And I'll bet you that's what happens here. Ann Lauer will call Batman. He'll say, you're jamming me up big time here. Dude, the guy who screwed up is that? gone. And then anything in the future, <laughs> someone's going to say, hey, remember how the favor you did to – I don't know if you can But it's not about that. a favor. It's about It's about the owner. You know, it's if you have a new owner in a club of 32, this guy paid a billion dollars. Yeah. Right. Like and you're jamming him up like this. Yeah. Listen, the mistake. I don't know if there's any precedence here. I, I guess it's worthy of them being penalized a first round pick. The NHL has to do something here it was obviously a big mistake by Ottawa. They were going to be penalized. And if Eugene Melnick was still the owner, then you penalize. What I'm saying is they always make exceptions to the rule. They all, it's their own rule book. You know, this doesn't have to go through Parliament or the White House to get signed off on. They make up their own rules. And I just wouldn't be shocked if a year or two from now, all of a sudden you hear, you know, the commissioners actually decided to make it this or that. Yeah. And but Hazy, cooler as far as the details, here. so Dadanoff went to Vegas. Yes. And what Ottawa did not do is explain to Vegas what his 10 teams were on his no trade. Yes. That, that I, I don't was think the they issue. ever even told right. him he had a modified no trade. They had no idea. Well, why so, didn't Vegas ask? Like, there's so many weird things. It's like, it seems like it's just part of a standard trade that, and I'm not saying Vegas, Vegas didn't do anything wrong, but wouldn't you say, hey, is there a, like, it just seems like standard business that was missed, and it seems so goofy. And to lose a first-round pick over it, I would be incensed. That's a big penalty, man. It's a big, big penalty. It's like buying a car and then realizing there's a dead body in the trunk. Like, (laughs) like it's just, it's literally like there's... It's extreme, but maybe one of the tires doesn't work or something. But okay, fair enough, fair enough. But I, I've been watching John Gotti on the Netflix thing, so that's why my oh, mind God. goes there. But it's honestly, it's 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 opening up the hood and them not disclosing something wrong with the vehicle. Like it's it's, you know, there to me, he has a right to be pissed, and you know, the Shane Pinto. You have to wonder when the timeline of all of this stuff came down. Really, that's uh, yeah, because you know they, they've been sitting on this for a while. Because, you, you know, you're not going to clip them. You just clip your player 41 games, and then, oh, the next day you're going to go, um, by the way, we're taking another uh, a first rounder. Like, it's almost like the league, like, spread this out a little bit because they've been taking punch after punch type of thing. Yeah, possibly. I, I don't – I can't speak to the timeline. Naturally, the NHL gives no answer on anything, and then they just say, that's it, dismissed, moving on, just like the Pinto stuff. 
Like something happened. Yeah, no there further with comment. No further comment. Absolutely no information being revealed. And that's it. And that was the statement on this front that Ottawa, it'll either be in 24, 25, or 26. And Ottawa will have 24 hours to make that decision post lottery, post draft lottery. So, in other words, if they're in the lottery and they win it, they'll push it to 25, then push it to 26. But if they get to 26 and they haven't used it, then that is when the first round pick will be uh, taken away from them. But, you know, Ann Lauer, he, he was pretty open and honest. He said the first few weeks were a blast. Everything was moving in the right direction. And then all of a sudden, big injuries. They lose three in a row. Pinto gets suspended. And now they lose a first-round pick, and he's got to fire a GM. And I don't think it's surprising that Pierre Dorian – I think Dorian was well aware that at some point it was going to be trouble for him. I would think, you know, there's a chance that DJ Smith is thinking the same thing. And what I mean by that is – when new owners come in, they bring in their own people. Like, that just happens yeah. at some point. I would guess, simply my guess, that Ann Lauer was probably waiting for an opportunity to move on from Dorian. Why not do it right away, and, though? But this gave him the chance, right? You don't want to just step in and blow people out because that's not fair. You're dealing with good people, professional people. You know, you got to give it some time. But this was an opportunity for Ann Lauer to just say, okay, we're out. Like, I'm getting out anyway. Hey, Hazy, Why I wait until totally the end of the it. year? You're gone now. But everyone in the hockey world knows that Michael Landlauer is going to take over the Ottawa Senators and bring, bring in his own people. And he started with Steve Stales, and everybody knew it. So why not just let him know when I take over the team? Like, it's, it's game over. I think it's, I think it's easier on everybody as opposed to just waiting for it. And then the guy Pierce thinking, oh, they, this is a big screw-up. Like, this isn't a minor one where it's like, oh, you waited for something minor. Like, right. he, he, he really – This one you he, knew was he, coming. He did something significant here or something significant happened. But I don't know. I'm taking over. It's basically I'm cleaning house and getting my own pe- – I'm not letting people wait around for the – for the shoe to drop. I hear you. And you, what you yeah. risk is success to the point where then it becomes difficult to, to do. I mean, it was an example. There's been countless examples of that in, in Toronto alone. I remember with the Raptors when Brian Colangelo got here and he had Sam Mitchell and everyone knew it. Like everyone knew he didn't want Sam as his coach. And yet Sam goes out, wins 47 games. They win the division. He won coach of the year and Colangelo had to keep him around. And about a year later, Maybe a year and a half later, first stumble, boom, he was gone. And everyone yeah. knew it. Like, everyone knew it was just a matter of time. So you're risking success, maybe deviating from your plan. But, you know, all of a sudden, you look at Ottawa. They're 4-4. Four and four. They're seventh in the Atlantic. It's early, but Pinto's out and Dorian's out, and you've lost a first-round pick, and DJ Smith is getting chance. It's not good. <laughs> it's really, really not good. Well, for a that's team the that question needs to turn for- things around. That's the question moving forward. And there's been talk of some movement as far as GMs with young teams, and it's like they want to keep things calm and not have any disturbances. Now there's all this stuff going on with this young group of core guys. Can they recover from this and just say, we got to go out there and win games? Because well, this is to. kind of – it's yeah, it's messy when you're a player. You're like – you're just going to the rink and you're like, what the hell is going to happen today? Like, this stuff is not normal stuff to happen in an organization, especially a GM being fired. It's kind of a shocking – I've never had it to me, only a coach. But it's like the Pinto thing is somewhat shocking. You're like, a, one, a guy can't – like, what? Yeah. Like, no contract. And it's like – it's kind of just really crazy stuff. Yeah, it's a and then this happens wow. a week later, and you're like, we have to just focus and settle things down and start winning games. Because that'll stop the circus. That's the only thing that will stop the circus is if they start winning some games. Because then everyone just focuses right. on the winning. You're right. But but nobody, like, the thing I feel bad about is, like, Pierre Dorian didn't bet for Shane Pinto. Like, that's that's the kid and, and whoever surrounds him being an idiot. Really, that's a victim flat, of flat circumstances, out. Jamie. That's what that is. You're right. It's like you were but, but around say, when that happened. Michael Anlauer buys the team. And his opportunity is to do a forensic audit of the whole organization. And I don't think he probably would have wanted to fire Pierre Dorian this early, but there's just too many circumstances that have surrounded it. So you make that decision. But, you know, now now all of a sudden, who's the next guy on deck? They might have had somebody in mind, but that person might have been working for a different organization, whatever. But ultimately, you've got to, you know, 
parachute well, somebody in. Well, it's now. I mean, Steos yeah. is the interim GM, and he yeah. might pull a Dubas and look in the mirror and say, you're the man, you know, in the end. You're he my may, guy? may be the guy <laughs> anyway. But Bruce Garriott coming up later in the hour from Ottawa. Uh, the Leafs, that was something last night. Man, were they flat. And uh, Johnny came on yesterday and revealed stats, which are factual. What? Well, remember the facts that he came up with <laughs> after a long road trip? The stats would indicate it's actually not that big of a fall. Yet last night, I understand it's sample size, it's one game, but that screamed of a team that had nothing. Like they had nothing, no life dude. last no. night. And I think those type of statistics, like what your win-loss percentage actually looks like after a long road trip, you need context in that. Who are you playing yeah. Playing bad teams, soft teams. You playing teams that have been on the road for a long time. Dude, it was LA, a great comp. Yeah, LA has not been on the on the road for a long time, and they're a big team. They're a good team, and they showed up and and they were ready to play. I, I didn't think the Kings were like world beaters last night, but they don't care. They didn't have to be. The no. Leafs handed them two points effectively, and um, all of a sudden, you know, you you kind of spoiled what was a pretty good trip, and now you got a big one tomorrow night in Boston. And it comes at you quickly. Yeah, and those five, games are awful one. to play in, Hazy. Those games are awful to play in. And I know Johnny has his, well, I don't know what his numbers were, but he has some scientific evidence that that's not supposed to happen. I called him a liar on the panel last night. But it's <laughs> it's weird to just be skating around, and it's like you're, like you ever have a dream where you're in a fight and you can't punch and you're just like useless? That's what it feels like. You're like in a fog and you can't get out of it. And you can't change it. But, like, I wonder, when did L.A. fly to Toronto? I don't think they've been on the East Coast for very long. No. So why is it Why is it them just, like, they, it was, I thought it was no contest last night. Like, they just, they dominated. They were bigger, faster, stronger, competition level. It was just lay an egg and try to make up for it in Boston because they had nothing cooking. Nothing yeah, cooking at all. The only time... The only time it looked bad for me was the end of the second period. They got hemmed in the zone there what, about about 90 seconds there, and that's where, you know, that didn't look so good. L.A. was just – L.A. was doing what Toronto does to teams, is hold on to the puck and, and move it around and get good looks. And, and that's when I think where the boos came, wasn't it? Yeah, they, well, they got booed last night for sure, I think on multiple occasions, which – I mean, that's scattered. It's not – but the boos are fine if it's effort-based. Right. Like I know the reaction right. from a lot of Leaf fans will be they're five, three and one. It's early. Why are you turn and, and everyone's got their own opinion on booing and all that. But I've always believed if you buy tickets and these are incredibly expensive tickets and you go down there on Halloween at eight o'clock and a team plays like that, voice your displeasure. Of course you should. Why wouldn't you? And if you don't want to, then don't. But if you do, I, I'm I totally understand why you would. And you know, the conundrum the Leafs are dealing with, I think, specifically up front, because there's a lot of different things to get into, mm -hmm. is when you come out of a game like la that last night, do you focus on the big guys who are going to get the focus at least 90% of the time over the course of a season? And Matthews and Marner were asleep last night. Um, you know, Willie was okay. Tavares scores. He was okay. But when does that 10% come up where you have to look past them and say, okay, yes, they had an off night, yeah, but when's camp someone score else has to show up. <laughs> exactly. Like yeah. when is someone else further down the lineup going to decide that, you know, we're going to take over a game here or find a way to win a game or keep in a game and get a point, get to overtime. And, you know, that that's what's clashing right now because Matthews and Marner in particular have been um, – inconsistent at times you know I think Marner in particular more so than Matthews Marner has not had a good start based on his own standards right he set the bar incredibly high and he knows he can play better he will play better he and Matthews will connect it will take off it's a matter of when not if but the depth may not be a matter of when you know or if it may be different you know, if, if you're talking Max Domi, if you're talking Matthew Nyes, who's a kid, he's still a rookie, David Kemp, Pontus Holmberg. Yeah, you like know, where's, like, when's a goal going to come in and help out and chip in to say, like, it could have been us coming on here saying, you know what, the third third line saved the day. Yeah. They scored a couple big goals in the second period, got them back in the hockey game, and then Johnny scored that, that power play goal. As much as 
most of the panel hits I do post game are, and Duffy actually makes fun of me a little bit. He's like, a lot of times it's big guys got it done, big guns get it done, big guns nowhere to be found. And like somewhere in the middle of that, someone else has got to step up and be like the third line. Mm -hmm. One of those guys, some of those guys have to chip in to say they got them back in the hockey game. That was the turning point. And then John Tavares gets that goal. Like if you're, if it's got to be them and them only, it's, it's not troublesome. Work over, no, over dude, games. it's not. It's and not you possible. play a team like that, a team like that when you watch, and that game, well, I'll give them a one-off. Okay, they just stunk the joint out. They mm -hmm. weren't very good. It was the first game home or whatever, but it was like. Man, the depth. Like, you just looked at the depth of L.A., and their kind of depth players were out there making plays, getting the pucks in, and they just they look, they look terrible last night. There's no other way around it. But sooner or later, some of those guys have to contribute. There's just – Yeah, you got to have it. That's yes. the nature of the beast. You know, like Matthews, Marner, Tavares, Nylander, they can only be on the ice so much, and you can only yeah. expect so much over the course of the year. you know how year. easy that is to coach against, Brian? It's yeah. like, there yeah. it is, three guys, shut them down. Four guys, like no, no one else will is a threat. Yeah, well, that and that's kind of the reality of what they have. I mean, you know, Bertuzzi's got to get going. Domi's got to get going. Um, you know, we mentioned Camp, but Camp is a fourth line player. Like that's what he always has been in his career offensively. I, I'm not expecting that to change because they don't have a third line center or they gave him a contract. You know, he he, you're not going to change him overnight. Ryan Reeves, Noah Gregor, these guys are what they are. You know, yeah. it's that's how they but built that's, it. That's the elephant in the room, guys. Ryan Reeves' line gets buried every Caved every in, night. Every right? night, yeah. And it's yeah. not his. That's, like he he's the face of it because of who he is. But there's right. two other guys out there all the time. Like I agree. he always 100%. takes the bullet. Like Reeves, Reeves, Reeves. And listen, it's been well established. We said that the second they signed him, we were all on the panel. We were all in the studio, July one, and we said, you know. This guy is the 12th forward on every single team he's going to play on. Like the 12th. He's playing five or six minutes a night. That's who yeah. he is. That's what but you have you to accept. you can't be caved in in your own zone for those five or six minutes. But that's the thing. Him like, and his line And mates. his line mates. And it's line really going to yeah. be on his line mates to keep them, you know, to push the play. And that's going to be on Noah Gregor or, you know, whoever, it's, whoever he's going to play with over the course of a season. But, yeah, it's one thing to – say, okay, you may not supply a lot of offense. You can't be getting scored on every night. You can't be getting caved in. You can't. Um, yeah. And, you know, that's that's where they're at. So the Leafs are in Boston tomorrow. We'll find out more about who's going to start tomorrow night. If there's any lineup changes tomorrow night, Boston, of course, has been off to a great start. So it, it'll be a tough challenge. Uh, game five of the uh, World Series tonight where you you could see it come to an end. You could see it. Come to an end. Texas ten and zero on the road in the playoffs. It's just a remarkable stat. Crazy, dude. And I remember game, one time before they came to Toronto, like there was a fifteen game stretch, and you came on here and you said <laughs> the Texas Rangers are the worst team in baseball. They were playing like it, dude. I know they were garbage. They Not lost on like paper, but they were playing like it. They, they lost, lost a like million ball games. Sixteen of twenty. It was ridiculous, and you were yeah. like, "They're gone. They cannot win. It's over." And now they might win the World they Series. They might win man. it in five, like manhandling Arizona. It was eleven-one last night, in like the fourth inning. That game was over. Yeah. And credit to Arizona, they didn't just lay down and die last night. They tried to push back. They put some runs on the board. But um, big opportunity for, for Texas tonight. So we'll look mm -hmm. ahead to that. Dallas Braden will join us later this afternoon. Role play level of concern in about an hour. More on the Ottawa Senators situation. Mike Johnson still to come. Or no, Ray's coming up today. Ray was between the benches last night. We've got Ray Ferraro on the show. So Ray's take on the Leafs, Ottawa, among other things, throughout the NHL. Overdrive continues. TSN 1050 and on the TSN app. Overdrive continues, brought to you by FanDuel, bringing you everything from the opening line to the final score. Leafs in Boston tomorrow night. Raptors in action tonight. Feels like a big statement for Pascal Siakam in particular. A lot of people wondering why Pascal has been MIA, MIA through four games. And uh, I'm not saying he's got to go off for 40 tonight, but if this is a fifth game where you're not really a part of the program, that's concerning. That is yeah. concerning. This guy's got to get going. I mean, yeah. this, this team is 
there's so many question marks. Like that's the and and the top guys have to be the top guys. They have to deliver I, you through. I like you the know? coach. At first game, he's like, "I love the fans. <laughs> They're amazing." Then what was it? Three or four games later, you gotta find you gotta find something else to contribute. <laughs> yeah, I like, can't pass the ball. <laughs> he literally said that at one point. It's like I can't pass. Go talk to somebody else. No, but as soon as I saw his whole kind of routine and how like positive, and I, I thought to myself. There is no way in hell that that guy can stay like that for more than a week and a half in pro sports. No. Not possible. Not possible. No. Even I on think a great even team. after winning streaks, he would find something to get pissed off about where his hair gets grayer and his boiler is going to get bigger and he's just going to be stressed out. You, wa- you watch and let's look at that guy in two months. I guarantee you he has a little pot belly on him and his hair is white. Well, I, I hope not. I mean, I'm rooting for Darko to stay in shape. Me too. And, you know, keep everything on the up and up. But, yeah, that's the nature of the job is once you hit head coach status, everyone relies on you. And all eyes are on you. And you got to talk every day. And you need to explain what's wrong. And, you know, you presume they had a good camp. They get a win opening night positive vibes and then all of a sudden you wake up a week later and you've lost three in a row guys are getting banged up you're getting beat up against bad teams at home fans are starting to get a little bit shaky and wondering what's going on here people challenging your system right what's up with the offense why can't you break them out all kinds of different things that are inevitable in pro sports you can't run from it like you're not reinventing the wheel here he's not yes he's a new coach but this is not a new position no every kidding. Raptor coach in their history has gone through it, and every coach in the future will go through it too. And we're talking two or three years here, Hayes. I think he's just going to get to a point where he's like, if they play a good game and lose, he's probably going to go back to his office and say, I don't know if they got much more than that. I don't know if this group of players has got much more than that. So it's not any different than what we've seen the last three years. Mm-hmm. These guys are – that group of players, that main core of talent – and obviously they're waiting for Scotty Barnes to turn the corner. If that happens, be great. But it's it's, it's the same stuff out yeah, there. Yeah, it's the same guy. I'm a casual fan, and I watch it, and it's a lot of the same. Yeah. It's, it's a Siakam lot of the same. Yes. Gary Trent and OG yeah. Ananobi. The, if he's it's playing. like a movie that just mashes in together, and it's like yeah. I've seen that play, I've seen that not work, and I've seen you fall short at the end, and it's yeah. like a mishmash. That's it's all it. the same stuff, man. And yet, the new piece is the head coach, and he's supposed to be the one to find a way to turn it around. But, you know, to be fair to, to Darko, that he can't make the players do it. Dude, he can't I get find it, but talent based on it for a, a whiteboard. Years. To get away from that mishmash where you're like, I'm watching this, it's like the Calgary Flames. We talked about it. All their forwards look like third-line players right now. But do you know what stops the mismatch in any, any sport? It's, it's elite talent. It's like Steph Curry, Austin Matthews, Connor McDavid. That stops the mismatch, and if you don't have it, you're just going to get that. Yeah. It's the same story over and over. It gets boring, to be quite honest with you. Yeah, well, that's what they're risking here is that fans are like, what is changing here? What's different? Yeah, you're one in three, you got a new coach, but it's the same guys going out there making mistakes, not hitting shots, you know, running into shot clock violations. Um, yeah, it's amazing how new blood – can you know and Scotty Barnes represented that a couple of years ago talk to Spurs fans right now like they are rejuvenated they stole one against Phoenix last night and Wembanyama is everywhere like he, he's everywhere yeah. he put up 18 points he had four blocks last night there's a turning great turning KD inside out yes dunking, like... there's a great picture of him <laughs> d'ing up on KD and KD he has to almost hit the ceiling to get over his hand dude there's another guy he ends the the mishmash like, yeah, he stops the blah and it's like saying garbage like because he's different. He's a difference maker. He impacts games. He does things that no one else can. And that's, that's what, what they that's, need. And if you don't have it, you're kind of screwed. I don't know. Well, wow. and, you know, it's about being in your prime as well. I, I was reading today. It sounds like Harden is likely going to make his debut on Monday. I guess they're going to ease him in. What? Did you see the picture? Yeah, I know. That seems like a, I mean, there, <laughs> he just went through camp and he's a professional athlete. Um, who knows in the He's NBA? Amazing. Like they operate so differently. Giving guys three or four days off is dude, nothing. He was, in when the you NBA. say he was in camp, I don't think he was doing drills and stuff. He it might was selective need some work. Yeah, it was. It was. I think selective participation for James. I'll grant you that, and that is probably a part of it. Now you're invested in him, 
if you're the Clippers, you better make sure he's in he's in shape. But there was a picture that the paparazzi got. I think I, I want to say he Is was he walking the through suit again. No, he's walking through <laughs> LAX. He had three phones in his hand, and <laughs> everyone's like, "What would you possibly need two bat lines for?" And like, did you pick up a third flying to LA thinking I'm hitting LA here? And, yeah. you know, I got the main line, I got the bat phone, and now I need something on top. Like a third wow. phone. Think of the web of conversation that cat's having Dude. on three different Dude. phones. Have you ever watched, like, the skills competition at the NBA showcase, the yeah. All-Star game? There's guys on the side. Oh, my Look at him God. walking Scott around in public three. with three different phones. Yeah. There is guys on the sidelines. They're fanning out their phones like they're holding a, a, a poker hand. It's like, how many phones do you need? I what know. are you up to? What now? are you up to? And if who gets the main line? Who gets the bat line? And who gets the Robin line? You know, like who's who's subjected to the third phone? That's Dude, that's what it, I want to know. It would make you crazy. It would turn you into Mrs. Doubtfire. You know, when he doesn't know which one he is and he's going. Yes, to the, exactly. The confusion. <laughs> he's got, the, he's the, got the female outfit on and he's yeah. talking in a deep voice. And it's like, what the hell's going on? <laughs> yeah. You would turn into Mrs. Doubtfire. You, would. where you wouldn't know who you were or who you were talking to. I guess it was so, actually in the locker room. There's the there's the pick. My guess, my guess is the red one is the velvet rope. That is the VIP one. That's I, very I think selective for that one. He's is that got what you're layers. Suggesting? He, yes, if you if you make the red phone, you are in that inner circle. You have you've achieved status, elite, yeah. super elite status. Right. I know about noodles. World. What the hell are the other the guy? I don't think he's married. So what are the other two phones for? I don't know, man. I don't know, because as far as I know, he's not married. I, I don't think he's got any kids. I don't know, but I don't believe he does. Does anybody know what, like, if you know what the routine is for the three phones, and we've been around the block, we're not stupid, but if there's any inside info on how it works, enlighten us on yes. Twitter. At Hayes TSN. At Hayes please. TSN. Send we, us your we theories. Actually put up a poll. Yes. Put up not, a poll not theories, because I don't want to hear <laughs> monkey business and stupid yeah. stuff. I want to know if anyone has, like, an inside rope on what it actually means or how it functions with three phones. Yeah. I mean, I, I would assume if you get into a relationship, that's probably something that's going to come up quickly, right? Like the yeah. new... Quickly, if a female walked into your living room and saw three phones on the coffee table, she's turning around and in her car in 14 <laughs> seconds, dude. Possibly. <laughs> Uh, or Not unless you're on the red one. <laughs> yeah, maybe she's maybe she made it through the you know three yeah. layers, right? Maybe it, once you're into the red phone, then it's all good. But you know, if you're in a relationship, do you have to get rid of two phones? Do you need to make sure that she has access to all three phones? Um, you know, if you're having a night off and you're shutting her down early, do you shut two phones off and leave one open? I don't know, man. I'm so curious. So weird. Because I've seen two. <laughs> I've never seen a three pack. Like three pack. That's that's like Pentagon stuff. Dude, Man, that's... watch the All Star Game, the the dunk competition. The guys on the sidelines, they're fanning out their phones like a a, de a deck of cards. I feel like those are bo burners though for the weekend. You know, like that's right. you got your main phone, and then you get a second phone when you fly into town, and that thing stays in town. You know, I, yeah. I have a feeling that that kind of funny business could be happening. Here's your phone for the weekend. We're in Vegas for 48 hours. It will self destruct in 49 hours. Say, okay. Yeah. All right. Burner phone. We're coming in hot. Let's see how it rolls out. But, uh, yeah, it'll be a fun one tonight. Again, with the Raptors in, in Game 5 of the World Series. And see your boy Josh McDaniels. He fell on the sword today. Finally. The, yeah, it was so long overdue, sadly, for him and the visor and the Bill Belichick coaching tree. But they didn't. They never put up any points. They were never effective with McDaniels. And he was supposed to be this offensive guru. And I saw Adam Schefter tweet out last hour. In each game this season, the Raiders have scored 21 or 21 points or fewer, rushed for fewer than 100 yards, and recorded at least one turnover. They're the first team to do that in each of their first eight games of a season since the 1941 Cleveland Rams. What was his position in Denver? Did he get the head coach? Yeah, he was a head too? coach. He was there when yeah. they drafted Tebow in the first round. But that didn't work either. No, it was a mess. It was a mess. And then he, he went back to Belichick. 
This is the power of Belichick. You I keep know. getting chance after chance, and the power of Brady. Let's call that. Let's let you got to include him. It's not just Belichick. McDaniel's and Brady were on the same page. Brady was electric with him as the offensive coordinator, and teams around the league were like, "Oh, we'll take that." The well, problem that would is flip Brady an didn't interview, go with him. dude. That would flip an interview if you said to somebody in an interview, you know. If you just put a video pack together and say these is what me and Tom Brady conjured up in big moments, some owner would be just drooling. Right, of course. It's an easy sell. Call yes. up Tom. Tom will vouch for me. Tom, do you think Tom he knows circles back to Billy? No. I wouldn't be surprised. They all do. Patricia's no. back there. Judge is back there. Bill O'Brien's back there. I would not be surprised if McDaniels ended up back in New England because he's not going to be head coach again. That's not going to happen. Once you strike out twice, you, you're not getting a third strike. There's no chance. Well, what's Lloyd? Who's Lloyd Christmas going to hire then? Now, who's? I don't you know. know what's, he's, uh... he's spending a lot of money. Noodles. <laughs> like he's got to get a GM <laughs> too. Just... Yeah, they fired the GM. Ziegler got fired so, too. The offensive coordinator. I... <laughs> like they just blew out everybody. I, I told you guys, I'm on a group chat with my buddy Bobo and his business partners, and they're all Las Vegas fans, just chewing McDaniel's apart and all. Yeah. Of, like even the other night, like it's just chewing him apart. And I just wrote back like. You know, careful what you wish for. Lloyd Christmas is driving the bus. You have no idea <laughs> what what's around the corner. That's right? the truth, man. It starts at the top, and and the fact is, Mark Davis does not. It doesn't appear like he knows what he's doing. You know, right. based on his hiring practices, based on who he brings in, the way the team is constantly in a position of ineptitude and losing. Yeah, I I have no faith they'll get it right. I don't see why you would have any faith they'll get it. Well, right. he's had the Gruden mess on his hands. He's had yep. the Antonio Brown in Oakland mess on his like it's not mm-hmm. yeah. Some people are gonna start wondering what the hell that guy's up to running a professional sports team. <laughs> and they're paying and him he, a lot of money. He, yeah. Yeah, like well these Davis is the owner. Yeah, so no, I like, know, but I'm saying like Gruden's still getting paid, I believe, because that was not with cause. It was a ten year deal. Yeah, and now uh, McDaniel's has got three or four years left, fully guaranteed. At he, he's he's paying like forty million a year to people not to work there for years to come. That is difficult <laughs> to chew on. But yeah, Davis, aka Lloyd Christmas, not in a good position, and Vegas is. No. Not to mention they're in a division with Kansas City, so you're going to be watching Patrick Mahomes come to town for the next ten years. Mm-hmm. That won't get any easier either. Um, all right, Ray Ferraro coming up in about 25 minutes. Role play level of concern coming up as well around 5.30. Overdrive continues. TSN 1050 and on the TSN app. Make sure you follow us on Instagram at TSN 1050. Shout out to Mitch. Mitch the Kid on Instagram. Picked up a pair of tickets to see the Leafs take on the Lightning November 6th. So uh, love that. Follow us on Instagram at TSN 1050. Keep an eye out. For your feed and uh, for more chances to win Leaf tickets all season long, we're going to have our Maple Leaf Player of the Day for the Leafs lineup, or we'll be giving away tickets on Friday. We'll get to that later this afternoon. Ray Ferraro in 20 minutes. Role play level of concern still to come. It's, uh, it's a gong show in the country, man. We spent so much oh. time early in September building up to a new year and talking about all the seven Canadian teams. And, you know, it's wild. Like, the team that's been just – quiet and going about their business montreal is montreal vancouver. Well, no vancouver, i'd say montreal too. like vancouver you know talk it was calling them out in philly and yeah, jt true. miller got benched last night like there's stuff coming out of vancouver they won vancouver's winning full credit to them before but, you get there hayes i like that transaction last night you know what your bench for a period chew on that and come back in the third period and score a big goal yeah and shove it at the coach that's what rick wants yeah. It was like a grown-up transaction. You're Perfect. benched. Come back in the third and score a goal. Yeah, exactly. You send, you, the reason you send a message is for the bounce back. To That's your right. You Coach love the bounce back. That. And they I, got I it. I think it was a great move. But but you know what? Like if you bench a guy, he, it trends on Twitter. Everyone's upset, and all you know, he's too hard on the guy. Too. You know what? Miller responded and said, "Hey, I'm gonna give me the puck. I want to be a difference maker in the third. I was watching that game." You know, they, they, they had some pockets there, and, and Miller's a guy that is really streaky within the game. You see sometimes a lack of effort, the body language, all that. He's an emotional player. So what do you do with emotional players? You prey on that emotion. Talk it pissed him off, and you're right. In the third period, he's like, yeah, I want back on the ice. He started him in the third. 
And the guy went and responded with a goal. Good on him. Yeah, and he was he got benched for like five minutes. We're talking yeah. like three shifts tops. Well, you know. I read the whole second. No, I think it was at the end of the second period. It, it he he had a couple of stupid penalties. He had a I want to say a double minor early in the game, and then another penalty. And he definitely was sad for he missed shifts for sure. But it was yeah he did. closer to the you know back end of the second period. And to your point. That's the move. That's how you jab at a guy. Then send him right out there and say, let's see what you got. Like, I'm watching you. I didn't like it. Let's see how you respond. And, you know, Vancouver's off to a really good start. Really good start. Like, relatively quiet, too. You're right, Noodles. Like, there have been a couple of flare-ups, but kind of just going about their business and relying on their best players. And, you know, watching the game last night, it's funny how these Hughes kids, and they're not all kids. Like, Quinn's a little bit older, but they're still really young in the league. They supply so much entertainment, and the way they play with the puck, the way that they operate, like watching – I was watching that Vancouver game last night. Obviously, I've seen Quinn Hughes play a ton, but he's got such confidence, like with the puck. He goes anywhere he wants on the ice. Um, His ability to make plays, and then you look at what Jack's doing, his brother Luke down in New Jersey as well. Like, these are – like more skilled, smaller stall brothers that are probably going to run the show here for like 15 years. Imagine it like the, the craziness of that, Hayes, having three sons that are that good. Yeah, that good. Because usually one's a dud. You know what I mean? <laughs> like kind of, you know, like, a, I don't know. The stalls are all good players and they're all different. But like usually if there's three, you know, two or three, they're like, okay, one's the superstar and one's like the yeah. brother of the one's superstar. One's a fourth line they? plumber somehow. Right. But these right. guys are just flat out the most skilled things you've ever seen. Yeah. And I don't know. Like they, they, that dad must have people calling saying, what did they do when they were kids? Like, what yeah. skill development? Because if I was a dad, I'd be like, I got to get a hold of their dad, who's a great guy, and say, what the hell did they do when they were kids? Because I want my kid to do that. Yeah. Now, the the an- I don't know what the answer is, but it may be as simple as they just went and played hockey all the time. You know, like the, they had three of them. They were always playing ball hockey. There's a pond in the back. I don't That would know. be too I mean, old school of an answer. In the Connor McDavid era, like these guys – these kids are playing all year long in private lessons yes. and skill training and, and off ice, and it's it's a full-time gig for little kids. Yeah, it is. Yeah, it's a, it's a huge operation, it, and it's massive. a big commitment. And obviously the payoff, if you become Jack Hughes, that's pretty good. But if you're, right. you know, Larry Hughes and you're not <laughs> making Hughes. it Rick Hughes, and <laughs> then obviously it's a different, you know, look yeah. back in different history and different retrospect but well, yeah vancouver's off to a good start you know full credit to rick tockett and that crew because that's been the gong show of the country for a long time right like you see what yeah. ottawa's dealing with right now vancouver forever when it was jimmy benning and it was making trades and signings and you know guys getting fired and gm's coming in and like really loud in vancouver did, and what, now it's working for them what did Jimmy Benning say, like, one table away from us when we were in Buffalo? That was, was – well, no, he said we were going to talk to a bunch of people. Sue Ben. Wasn't Sue it Sue Ben? Included, and he, it was, like, tampering almost. Yeah, it was. I think it was PK and Stamkos. Stamkos. Yeah, yeah Stam- he's like, we're talking Stamkos. to everybody. Yeah. And it yeah. was like, no, Jimmy, you're not. I think they got clipped for that. I'm pretty sure he definitely got fined. They, they might have lost a draft pick. But that was, yeah. Uh, yeah, that was on on TSN out in Vancouver. It was five feet from us, and I'll never yeah. forget that. Matt Sakaris, I was looking at him, and Sakaris was looking at me. He's like, "You can't, you're not going to believe what's going on here." It's like Jimmy Benning just admitted on the air that they're that he's talking all to in everyone. on PK and all yeah. in on Stamkos, and they're both currently under contract with different teams, oh. and that's totally not legal. Um, so yeah, he supplied us a lot of a lot of content, Jimmy Benning. And I don't think that's necessarily carried over here with uh, Patrick Alvine, but still, it's, you know, it's a good start. It's a good start for Vancouver. And when you consider, again, Montreal's had a good start. Vancouver's had a good start. Ottawa, Toronto, Winnipeg, Calgary, Edmonton, you know, the team's in the middle. They've had their ups and downs. And uh, it's a long season, though. We're still only a couple of weeks in. We're November 1st, so a lot of time here. 
Uh, all right, Ray's coming up. Ray Ferraro will join us in about uh, 10 minutes. We'll get Ray's yeah. take on the Leaf game last night. That was, was 50K for Jimmy. 50K. He got I'm clipped 50,000. 50, okay, that's not a bad fine. He can pay no. that off. That's okay. No no draft picks or anything, just money. He can he can handle that. Um, Ray Ferraro on, on the start of the Canucks, where the Leafs are at, where Ottawa goes from here. Role play level of concern coming up. Game five of the World Series. We'll tee that up. And Raptors, Bucks tonight. Giannis and Dame. Both in town down at Scotiabank Arena. We'll tee that up throughout the afternoon as well. Overdrive continues. TSN 1050 and on TSN 2.